Uh, my name is Christine Pearson. I'm in Leicester, based in Leicester at the moment. My background in jewellery making goes back, embarrassingly, about 40 years. It's a long time. And I started in jewellery at Leicester Polytechnic, as was well, now at the University. And then I worked as a jewellery manufacturer in a jewellery manufacturer as a big company as a designer. And they made cast jewellery in nine karat gold and also lots of fly presses. Since leaving there a long time ago, I've carried on working on my own work. And now I've, I'm sort of full time in my own workshop here based at home in Clear Leicester. I probably started my love of jewellery making when I was a teenager and I did a lot of handcrafts, anything really, painting, artwork and I got into doing some embroidery at one time and then I started using wire in my embroidery and beads and that kind of led naturally into jewellery making so it was probably about 15, 16 years of age so quite young really. At the moment, what I'm doing a lot of is enamelling work. I've got two kilns here. And enamelling I did during my degree course, but I only just got back into it over the, next, the last three or four years. Enamelling is just such a fantastic process because you're never quite sure. You think you've got an idea of how things are going to come out, but there's a little bit of chemistry and alchemy goes into it. Um, my favourite materials, um, I've been doing quite a lot of work recently in copper because it's cheap and it lets you just be, a few bits, it lets you be quite creative and free and experiment without having a big financial cost. But I also work quite a lot in silver with enamelling, so it just depends what colours I need. So I think my style, my jewellery style at the moment is big, bold, colourful work. I do incorporate texture into my work through rolling or um, hammering textures in using different things. Some tools I make myself, some I buy. And a big combination. So at the moment, I'm able to just experiment and try new things, which is great. And because I'm putting things online, you get feedback from people. And, uh, you know, it's nice to get that feedback, even though you're stuck in at home. A lot of my inspiration comes from the natural world, from plants, flowers, landscapes, but also anything. It could be a wall that's got some peeling paint on, or it could be a different texture on something that's worn and it's got those layers of paint coming through. I also get inspiration but just by doing, by making, and with the enamelling especially, because you're never quite sure how it's going to turn out. I like to mix and match the drawing with actual practical work, trying new colours and experimenting really, just trying new things. Because quite often in enamelling, you'll get something that, oh, I didn't intend for that to happen. Mm. And sometimes that can lead you down another path. And you think, oh, I quite like that effect. I'm going to just pursue that a bit further and try and combine some different things. So inspiration comes all over the place. Because I was, I, was, I was looking back and thinking what my best work is, I think it's probably um, a silver cloisonne enamel piece that I made. I did a course in London with a brilliant, talented teacher and learned a lot from it. So I didn't really know what I was doing when I was making this piece. I was learning a lot. But I think at the end of it, I thought, I've, I'm actually quite proud of what I've made. So this is the piece that I made on a course in London. Um, it's sterling silver and it's got a texture underneath it. And there's so many different stages to producing this piece of work because it isn't just a matter of painting it on. I made the little cloisonne shapes where the wires are, the silver wires, and then each of the colors has to be washed and ground. And each of those colors is probably three or four layers of enamel that are put into those little cloisonne cells. And between each layer, after it's dried, it goes in the kiln and then out again. So there's, there's just so many different stages to it. And at any stage, it can go wrong. So there's mistakes in it. It's not perfect, but I was proud that I'd done it. I'm proud that I'd achieved something. And then I can use this idea, and I have used techniques that I learned on this course in other pieces of jewelry that I did last year as well. 
I couldn't live without my enamelling kiln, but I've recently bought a, another enamelling kiln, so I do have a spare. So if one went, the other one would still be there. But the tool I've had since I was 18 years of age that has just kept going and going and going all this, all this time is a piercing saw. But the piercing saw just gives you so much more accuracy and it's the thing I couldn't live without because you can use it to do really fine work, but you can also use it just to, if you just want to chop a bit of metal off, you can do it, do it, do it quite quickly with a piercing saw. So a piercing saw is my first tool I would recommend to a jeweler to buy and just practice using that with, with the bench peg. I think the advice I'd give to the next generation of up and coming jewellers is to get as much knowledge as you can. Make jewellery, yes, have a go at new techniques, look at videos, look at books. Uh, I've learned so much over the years from people I've talked to and worked with. So if you do, if you ha are in a position where you're able to get any knowledge from other people, just, just do it. I mean, people make jewellery in different ways and, and we're all still learning all the time. So just, you know, try new things and talk to people as well to learn new skills. Thank you.